Okay, so some of you have been waiting for this for a while, and before I start, I want to say this is just what I've observed. I'm not trying to do the definitive hubs video, the definitive DNA of a cassette video. I'm doing this because I found that, at least from the 90s onwards, that a lot of cassettes have been OEM'd, and most cassettes from the 90s onwards are very decent. I don't know of many 90s cassettes that are poor quality. Yes, there were still the Type Zeros there, but they were obvious. But ones that were rebranded by stores or other retailers usually came from an OEM source that was decent, because in the reality of it is, there wasn't that many people making cassettes in the 90s. A lot of people selling them, but actually manufacturing them themselves, there wasn't that many. So this is just what I've observed. So if you're looking at cassettes that you don't know, you've never heard of, if you can see the hubs, you might be able to get a shot at guessing at who made them and whether they're going to be decent or not. So that's why I'm doing this. Yes, I'm sure the comments will be filled with you pointing out where I'm wrong because people love to point out where other people are wrong. But I'm not giving this as any definitive fact. This is just what I've observed. If you agree, great. If you don't, don't. You're not going to wake up next day and have leprosy or something if you don't agree with what I say. So just let it pass. Okay, but I think that hubs, together with the shells as well, are the fingerprint of a cassette. It's unique. You'll know where it came from. So let's start out with some of the big boys. The first one is SKC in Korea. I love SKC cassettes. I think SKC are among the most underrated cassettes out there. I've never had a bad one. Their ferrics are superb. Really are. Their AX is as good as any other super ferric that I've listened to. You know, I put it in AR quality, but they cost a lot less because, hey, they're SKC. Who's heard of them? But SKC were a big OEM supplier, and they also supplied a lot to the pre-recorded market in pancakes as well. So SKC hubs are pretty easy to spot. If we look at this Scotch BX, which was an SKC cassette, you can see that it's got the same hubs as the classic Memorex clown cassette, and there's a genuine SKC, the CD Super Chrome, which I love. But if you look, the hubs are all pretty much the same three holes look at the clips look at the holes these are all the same hubs and the same layout these are all skc so you see this type of hub chances are it's going to be skc in there and i just need to say sometimes especially towards the end of cassettes life people were using whatever bits he had made lying around so you know bits of tapes bits of this and bits of that so the hubs don't necessarily always say what tape is on there. So, like I say, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. But if the hubs are like this, depending on the vintage, chances are these are SKC. Now, Saihan is not a brand that you see many Saihan cassettes of. I, I personally have never owned a Saihan branded cassette. Again, they're Korean, but they made a lot of tapes for a lot of people. So... If we look at these, these three are all Saihan. In fact, look at the Saihan Z here, you know. And the hubs are different. This is the Saihan version of the Memorex Clown cassette. Look at the hubs. They've got little squares here, but they're not quite square. They're almost uh, cuboid or rhombus or whatever, but they're all the same, yeah? So this is normally how you can tell if this is a Saihan cassette by hubs like these. But it's not just that. I mean, Fuji towards the end. This generation Fuji, I've not had a, lot, a great deal of luck with, I've got to be honest with you. But I'm led to believe that these also come from Saihan, these type of hubs. I've got the later DR2 than this, which I'm pretty sure is Saihan as well. And this you are. This you are is Saihan. Look at the hubs in this. It's the same sort of style as the JV, uh, the Fuji here, but only this is in a clear plastic with a clear clip. So why do I think these are Saihan? Well, if we look at these hubs, they're very similar. This, however, I'm pretty sure is a Saihan tape. Why? Because the shell gives it away. Look at the top of the shell. You'll have A or B written here in a distinctive font. You'll have these little lines. And you'll have this small sticker in the middle. 
these are Saihan shells, so that UR has a Saihan shell. It's got these hubs, so therefore I'm concluding that these are Saihan. Okay? Saihan, very decent. Unspectacular. I won't say I've ever been blown away and gone, whoa, with a Saihan tape. But they always perform well. Very decent, and they're never usually expensive. And like I did a video on them, lots and lots and lots of people rebranded Saihan tapes. Okay, the next one. Gold Star LG. Now, this could be a bisnoma. I'm very, very aware this could be wrong. Because if we look at these three tapes, yeah, three whole hubs, yeah, they all look the same. The clip sort of looks the same, but it doesn't. It sli looks slightly different. These are slightly bigger holes. I'm not sure how much gold star lg actually oem for other people or if indeed they made their own tape i don't know I, I imagine being such a large south korean conglomerate you know it's lg now they would have had the means to make their own tape but whether they did or not i don't know because the gold star chrome x i have i've got three different versions one seems to be having these type of hubs and then you've got an SKC version and a Saihan version, and they all perform differently. The thing is here is that these could well be BASF. Now, I've heard that BASF worked with RAX, and they had some sort of partnership going, mostly with videotapes, but BASF RAX had some, some going, and these cassettes who made them, who they were sold by, where they were sold by, RAX makes more sense than Gold Star. And I heard rumours that BASF did produce hubs like this. Maybe they bought Gold Star's moulds. Maybe they bought all their old stock of hubs up. I don't know. So Gold Star LG, not sure. Not sure. But like I say, when I see these three holes, I always think Gold Star, but could be BASF. So let's go on to BASF. BASF probably were the biggest OEM of the lot. You know, you, you get any cassette that was said made in Europe or Germany on it, chances are it was going to be a BASF. And they bought AGFA towards the end. So BASF, AGFA, the lines blur as to when it was AGFA, when it was BASF. And I'm not arsed about figuring it out because on the whole, well, no, on the whole, BASF tapes have always been good. So distinctive hubs, if we look at these hubs here, They've got like little lines on them. There's no holes, just little lines, and they're held with a retaining peg, and they have this other little peg here. That's a good sign that, that it's a BASF. And in fact, if we look at the Tudor here, this is why I came to this conclusion, they have the same sort of lines and the little rounded ends around here at the end and the peg. So that's why, yeah, these and the way the tape performs, BASF. But again, it could have been Agfa in the mix, but I've seen these type of hubs in BASF Chrome Extras from the mid-80s. Now, the other type of hub, if we look at this BASF Chrome Extra 2 here from the 90s, and incidentally, these have the, I'd probably say, nicest, most well-made, all-clear shell of the lot. Very heavy, stylized. I really like these. There's one I like more, but that's coming up anyway. But these hubs initially, uh, through me, I thought they were Saihan. Can you see? They look like the single hole Saihans, but if we compare them to an actual Saihan, we can see that the holes are actually larger in these than in the Saihan. So these type BASF, but towards the end, BASF tapes really were bits as from the 90s onwards. You, there was no consistency in the hubs, in the shell, in the tape. They were all, the only consistency was that they, they were all good. I never met a bad BASF tape, but guessing who made them where they come from forget it basf seemed to hoover up lots of companies that were going out of business and their molds and oem stuff and yeah basf 90s on was all over the place but the quality control was always there because they were always good now this is an interesting brand icm of switzerland um if we look here at this hi-fi supercrom yeah very distinctive hubs. I call these sausage hubs because they, they look like sausages, these holes in these hubs. So you see sausage-style hubs with a retaining pin. Chances are 
it's from ICN. In fact, if you see on the back of a cassette, it says made in Switzerland, it's pretty much guaranteed it's going to be ICM. The tape in ICM, I don't believe they made it themselves. From what I heard, it's either a BASF or AGFA tape in there, which is good because ICM cassettes, I found universally to be very, very good. So if you like, look at these... Um, Seisho and Dixon's, and Dixon's was the biggest hi-fi, well, the biggest electrical retailer in Britain from like the 70s till about the millennium. If you can look at the tapes there, you can see they have the distinctive ICM sausage hubs. So the other type of ICM is this, and I borrowed this from Agfa BASF because I don't have this tape. This is very rare and very, very good. I love this tape. Um, look at the holes yeah circular all the way around but look at the shell this is a great shell this is like doing an mar shell under the cheap it sort of mimics the mar but it's just with frosted plastic and icm did do quite a bit of oe i mean like i say anything says switzerland chances are it's icm with these distinctive hubs with the sausage shape hubs these are icm and for example i love this tape this tape just packaged in there it just screams late 80s. It couldn't scream anything else. But as you can see here where it says turbo on this shell, it says boots on this. But it is the same MAR done on the cheap copy shell. And I love this tape because it's so cheeky. This next one, if you've got one of these or a couple of these, let me know. I want to buy a couple because this is... As far as I'm concerned, I did the video on the Luxman saying, is this snake oil? This is snake oil. This, the TSA Turbo. Look at that. Equipped with a unique turbo wheel, which generates air cooling circulation. Trying to make it look like there's turbines in there. You know, absolute bollocks. But what a cheeky tape. That looks good. If you've got a couple of these that you want to sell, let me know. I'm up for buying a couple because I think this is a cheeky tape. But again, the combination of this ICM shell with these hubs, all the ones I've used, these Dixons, these Seychelles, these Boots, all been universally very good. But that's how you can tell if it's an ICM OEM. Now, Denon. A lot of people have said to me, or commented at least, Denon didn't make their own tapes. No, they did. Denon made their own tapes. Very much so. In fact, Denon made tapes for other people. Why would you make tapes for other people if you didn't make them yourself? You're just a pointless middleman then. So no, Denon did make their own tape, and I love Denon tapes. Uh, Denon were not tapes I ever found when I was young. Never saw them because they were, at least in the UK, they were never sold in chain stores. You had to go to hi-fi shops. And I was young, I didn't have hi-fi shop money or the wherewithal, so I just went and bought another 10-pack of Max L U R. But Denon do have distinctive hubs, so you can tell if they're a Denon OEM. Okay, so we've got the likes of this HT7. These look like the Gold Star hubs, whereas the, um, the Gold Star hubs have three holes, these have two. So two holes like this, I've seen this in the DX series, these are Denon hubs. The more common Denon hub is this type where it's almost 3d it's like the the lattice work one on each side these are very much denon's signature hub and if we look at say this scotch 3m black watch we can see that has denon hubs because in fact if you look at this shell look at this they're the same tape different nice hubs but well not the same tape they're the same shell these are type 4 but Denon made the Black Watch series for 3M, and that's evident in the hubs. So Denon did make their own tapes. Stop saying, some of you, that they didn't. They did. In fact, reading the back of a HD8, the HD8 was the first Type 2 to use metal particle tape. That was Denon. So it wasn't the TDK HXS, as far as I can tell, because Denon wouldn't put that on the back of a packet if it wasn't true, because it's called Liable. So that takes us on to these guys. Now, these guys aren't very well-known racks of Turkey. And I'm sure there's still warehouses full of racks in Turkey. At one point, these were budget cheap tapes around Europe. Uh, you know, Turkish tapes. You look at it, Turkish tapes. Who wants that? Because other than kebabs, you know what I mean? Turkey isn't really known for making high-quality stuff. 
which is a misnomer because they actually make a lot of good stuff. I had a Turkish boiler for my house and it, you know, it went on for years just with an annual maintenance, no problem. I recently installed a top-of-the-line valent boiler from Germany and it broke within 18 months. So, yeah, Turkish stuff is good gear. Now, if we look at the actual cassette here, the hubs, to me, remind me of the Denon hubs. For a while, I thought, what's this? And I thought, racks made Denon and Denon made racks or whatever. They're not quite the same. They don't have the big clip. They've just got a little retaining peg. But this style of hub, again, 3D uh, sort of lattice work, is the signature of racks. And if we look at these two tapes here, Bush and the Max LSQ, you can see that they're the same hubs. Now, again, racks had a tie-in with BASF. How much of racks DNA is BASF? How much of it is BASF tape? As far as I can tell, racks didn't make a pure chrome. Rax Type 2s are ferrocobalt, so I don't know. I know BAS have made some ferrocobalt Type 2, which they put in the uh, reference to Maximas, but I don't know whether they'd bother taking reference to Maximas and loading it into clear shell racks and selling them cheap, whether they'd do that with that tape, or Rax just made their own because they made a lot of videotape. So, yeah. All I'll say is, I've never met a bad Rax tape. Rax tape's really good. And these two, even though the Bush brand in the UK you see now is low rent, and the modern Bush tapes you can get in Argos right now are terrible, these are Rax, these are good, these earn a super ferric. These perform like a, these perform like an AD to me. The SQ, not so much. Maybe it's a lower grade tape, because I believe probably that these Bush have this EDSX tape in, which is a really good type 1. But again, Max L, SQ, these are Rax hubs. So that's what to look for. Now these guys didn't really OEM, but I've got to mention them just because they're... I mean, TDK did OEM. They did early on. You know, your, uh, your Kenwood tapes, your Nakamichi tapes, they're TDK, but those are in shells that you can't tell what the hubs are anyway. Uh, so of the shells that you can tell the hubs of, these are the most common ones for TDK. These ones are from about 1990 onwards. You'll see them in the D, you'll see them in the F SF, and you'll see them in the SA. So that's TDK sort of 90s hubs. This is a bit earlier. This is like from this is from like eighty eight ish, where it's just got the nice big holes in it, and this is from the D in eighty six. Because again, very few TDK tapes apart from the D actually had clear shells that you could see the hubs going around properly. You could see bits of it in the SA and stuff, but earlier than say eighty six, which was the first all clear D, be uh, TDK tapes were all pretty much opaque shells, so you couldn't see the actual hubs. But these are the three main ones to look at. If you see ones that look like this, let me know, because I don't know of many TDK OEMs, to be fair. Um, towards the end, even TDK outsourced. But yeah, those are the main TDK ones. Sony, again, wasn't someone that did a lot of OEM, from what I can see. But the three main Sony hubs are these. These are the most common ones, probably. the just all the holes all the way around. Don't confuse them with the ICM. They look quite different. The ICM are flatter and they have bigger holes. Uh, these ones, I think, are some of the great hubs. I love seeing these ones go around. They look like almost little mini reel-to-reels, mostly from the UX series from the late 80s, from about 88, 90. And then... We've just got this sort of generic three parts of so the three cuts and you'll find these from around about 86 and a bit before in different colors uh, but again before 86 sorry before 85 it was hard to see any sony's in clear shell so you didn't always see the hubs but these are the main three types of hub for sony and we can't forget maxell Maxell basically don't have a massive variety of hubs and certainly if we look towards the end after the oval window period which lasted till about 91-ish um, the XL2s, the XL2Ss normally weren't clear shelled well they weren't clear shelled and you could very rarely see the hubs in any of the high end Maxell tapes and the low end ones, the main ones to look for are these which have these little 
oval cutouts. Now, earlier on, this is from an 86 tape. It was cut out all the way through. This is from a later UR, which was made by Pangung, but it was still using Maxell hubs. You can see the very distinctive hubs. They almost remind me of car, car sort of uh, alloy wheel sort of hubs. The other main ones is ones like this, which you could get in the oval shell XL series from the late 80s. But other than that, Maxell hubs don't vary a heck of a lot. So that's it. This was never supposed to be the definitive guide to telling the DNA of a tape. But like I say, look at the hubs. You're going to get a good guess at what it is that these hubs uh, are pertaining to and therefore what tape is in there. So if you're unsure, try and have a look at the hubs and I hope this has been useful for you. Thanks a lot. Take care. Happy recording. Bye.